Today we will have a look at how to future-proof the Commodore 64 power supply. Okay, so um, you see that here on this side we have the power coming in, that's the mains power, uh, which has two wires and uh, they go into the 9 volt voltage converter and the 9 volt voltage converter is uh, buried in the epoxy so you can't get it out and you can't touch it and then you have some wires coming out that carry 9 volt power uh, that's the yellow and the brown one here they go to the Commodore 64 and then also two wires that go here and uh, they provide the 5 volt transformer with power. So the 5 volts are also gained from the 9 volts. So actually the 9 volt transformer is performing a double task because it's uh, it's providing the Commodore 64 with 9 volts but on the other hand it's also providing the 5 volt transformer with power and here we have then 5 volts going out the green and white wires and they're also going to the Commodore 64. So what we want to do now is we want to exchange this part, the 5 volt block. Um, the 5 volt block, luckily, is uh, quite loose, so we can take it out. So uh, I've been performing some measurements, and uh, I will then replace this board with a better one that I just uh, ordered recently. Uh, it's a board which has a very similar size and uh, will fit in there. And this board has one slight design alternative in that it will not work on 9 volts but it will work on the mains power which means that then the main 9 volts transformer will have to do less work and uh, hopefully then also the heat um, development will be less and uh, well in any case I hope that this one will then protect the Commodore 64 from the voltage surges that can occur because these old 5 volt blocks they are really um, you know after 30 35 years they've really reached the end of their lifespan and when these fail then you can get some voltage surge to the Commodore 64 to the main board and you don't want that so I'm going to replace this one um, the other one the 9 volt block it's not at risk they rarely fail as far as I gather so uh, we'll keep them and uh, I'm just going to replace this one with the new one and obviously before I did any of these uh, I started measuring all the currents and uh, checked the polarity so that we don't get anything weird coming out on the other end so I've ensured that uh, the power plug really has um, all the wires in the right place and that it works currently so that uh, I will be able to compare it to when it's ready. So let's start now by working on the new 5 volt transformer and let's see how far we go. Before I could start I had to fix one issue with the plug on the Commodore 64 side. As you can see here the wires uh, are kind of crammed into uh, a very tight place and especially the green wire and this was kind of pushing the brown wire away and the soldering just uh, failed at some point and uh, the brown wire came loose. So I just added a bit of blue wire here in between to bridge the gap. This was really weird because it still looked like uh, it was an original plug, so nobody had been tampering with it. It's a really weird way to, to squeeze all these wires into that tight space. Um, so it was just a matter of time until uh, the brown wire would come loose. But okay, this is fixed now and uh, Thanks to that we can we can continue working on the actual transformer. Or so I thought there was still one more thing to do with the plug and that was to uh, protect the wires from making contact with the casing. Because this metal casing that you see uh, it's actually grounded on the side of the Commodore 64 so when you plug this thing in uh, the casing must not carry any power. Uh, so since the wire was making contact with this metal casing, in the end I was basically short-circuiting the power supply. Uh, in order to 
well that blew the fuse in order to prevent that I put a shrink tube around the cables and now hopefully after this one the plug is finally okay and uh, I can then concentrate on the actual work on the 5 volt block in the transformer In order to remove the old 5 volt board, you don't need to do anything else than cutting the wires. This uh, board is not fixed in any way. This is what it looks like. Here you see the new uh, component on the left, the new board, and that's the old one on the right. They're more or less the same size. Um, they're more or less the same depth. Um, it is a bit tricky to get uh, the new one into the old casing uh, mainly because of these plastic um, holders on the left that you can see here in the casing so I tried basically several ways how to fit this new board in and uh, bottom line um, after all my tries I think uh, I came to the conclusion that the only way to get it to fit is to put it in the way it was meaning with the components downwards and uh, of course this means that I had to remove a piece of plastic or a few pieces of plastic on the left. The 5 volt board has some uh, pre-made connectors so you can see the 5 volt one here and the mains connector on the other side so I decided to not solder any wires but instead to crimp them correctly which means that basically you are squeezing the connectors onto the wires with a crimping tool and that allows you then to easily connect and disconnect the wires later if you need such a tool I'd rather get the simple manual one unless you're doing a lot of this work don't use the automatic ones because they are either extremely expensive or there are some cheap knockoffs that won't work so a simple manual crimp tool should work just fine on the other side I soldered the wires to the mains power and of course also to those wires that go to the Commodore 64 so the 5 volt wires and then don't forget that since we clipped off some wires there and they were absolutely without any insulation I also put some shrinking tube on top uh, because I didn't want these wires to be uh, just hanging loose in there so this is the final stage of the assembly uh, you see the pieces of plastic I broke off here in order to be able to fit the 5 volt board in and let's have a quick look if it really fits all the way in so that we can still put the lid on top uh, but this turned out to be fitting just fine so there's enough room to put first the wires and then the lid now finally we plug in the crimped wires and with that the whole power supply is now fully functional and ready for testing I tested it when it was still open but of course be careful because of the live power After the first tests, I closed the lid temporarily. Currently there is nothing fixed in here yet. Uh, after some more tests, then I fixed all the wires inside with hot glue. And then I glued the lid shut. Uh, for these first tests, I closed the lid with tape so that I would be able to reach the inside more easily in case there was something to be fixed. But everything worked fine, so in the end I closed everything and I have been using it since then so at the time of making this video the power supplies two of them that I have fixed have been running without any problems for something like half a year these power bricks used to get very hot to the touch and since the upgrade they only get slightly warm when in use which is of course thanks to the 5 volt block that uh, operates on the mains power and it doesn't burden the 9 volt transformer anymore the 9 volt transformer is now basically only doing half of its job bringing 9 volts to the Commodore 64 but it doesn't need to provide additional power to the 5 volt converter so all in all this might also increase the lifespan of the 9 volt transformer <laughs>